The purpose of this series of five questions is to encourage you to think about new approaches to improving your life. We often get stuck in a particular way of addressing our problems without thinking about other possible approaches. This discussion also addresses how receiving perfect love from Jesus can meet our needs. I will go through a series of five questions with simple yes-no answers. As you progress through the five questions, you may see your needs being met at some intermediate point. However, I suggest that you continue to consider all five questions. Even though you may not currently feel a need for the thoughts expressed in the subsequent questions, you may, at a later time, find them useful. Question 1. Is your life just as you want it to be? All of us want a better life. Even if we temporarily seem to have all we want, we quickly return to feeling that we are lacking something. For example, a movie star may have just won an Oscar. However, within a day or two, they will start being concerned about what they have to do to stay on top. John D. Rockefeller was asked, how much money is enough? He answered, just a bit more. Question 2. Do you believe that if you just try harder, you can make everything okay? If you answered yes, the follow-up question is, did trying harder make it okay? Did your efforts at trying harder create an enduring solution to your problems? If not, you need to consider whether you are likely to be successful next time if you redouble your efforts and try even harder. The attractiveness of just trying harder depends on how big the problems are in our life. When our life is going pretty well, we believe that by just trying a bit harder, we can close the remaining gaps. Indeed, increased effort may close one gap, but other gaps in our life will quickly appear. For example, extra hours on the job may improve our job situation temporarily, but it may create a gap at home with our spouse and children as we have less time and energy for our loved ones. Trying harder creates an endless treadmill with new problems appearing as fast as we can fix current problems. On the other hand, when our lives are in deep trouble, for example, we're out of work, we're facing divorce, bankruptcy looms, or we're threatened by serious illness, in these situations, deeply troubled, the gap between where we are in life and where we want to be is so large that just trying harder does not seem to be a practical way out of our difficulty. People in deep trouble are more likely to be receptive to new approaches to solving their problems. Changing who I rely upon to manage my problems may be a better alternative than attacking the problems again and again by trying even harder. Question 3. Would your life be okay if somebody gave you perfect love? This question opens the possibility of relying on another person to meet my needs. This perfect love is something radical. It means a love that is, number one, unlimited in its size and scope. A love big enough to cover any problems I have. Number two, unconditional. I don't need to meet any goodness criteria in order to receive this love. I don't have to earn it or pay for it. Number three, forever. This love will always cover me. It will never be taken away, not for any reason. This perfect love is indeed radical. Being blanketed with overwhelming perfect love can make our lives okay, even though we still have many problems. For example, we may have very little money, but if our home is filled with perfect love, then our home may still be full of joy. If health problems threaten us, 
then being surrounded and covered with perfect love may make the situation more tolerable. Question 4. Can you get somebody to give you perfect love if you try harder? Can I get the people in my life to provide this perfect love? For example, my spouse, my parents, my children. I am tempted to just try harder to improve the important relationships in my life in order to get the perfect love I crave. I go back to the try harder strategy that proved so inadequate and futile in trying to fix my life by myself. For example, single people will date one person after another hoping desperately to find the right person who will love them perfectly. Fundamentally, trying to get people in my life to provide perfect love is never going to work. Other people are flawed, just like me. I could never supply perfect love to others. Therefore, how can I expect others to supply so great a thing as perfect love? Now we take a big leap. We started with my trying to fix my life by trying harder. Then we looked at getting other people to supply me with perfect love. Now we look to a power beyond all people, God and his son Jesus. Question 5. Jesus offers the gift of perfect love. Will you accept it? At this point you may say, I'm not sure I believe in a supreme power or in Jesus Christ. How can I put my reliance on somebody I'm not sure I believe in? I have tried relying on myself by trying harder, and it didn't work so well. I tried relying on other people to supply perfect love, and that demand was beyond their capacity. Now it's time to look to a greater power, indeed the greatest power, the being who said he counts the hairs on your head. Who is Jesus? Jesus is not just a nice guy. Jesus is the only founder of a major world religion who said he was God. Either Jesus is who he says he is, or he is a complete fraud. I suggest it is time to take a deeper look at who this Jesus is. Jesus promised to give me perfect love if only I would believe in him. Jesus was willing to suffer and die on the cross because he loved me so much. All I need to do is accept his perfect love. He does not require that I earn it by any efforts of my own. Jesus has done all the work. I only need to receive his gift. Does this seem too good to be true in this hard, mean world? Through Jesus, our eyes can be opened to a fundamentally gentler, more loving world than the mean world to which we are so accustomed. I prefer to live in the better world that Jesus opens for me. I personally have felt the perfect love of Jesus. Through this experience, I received all the proof of who Jesus is that I need. Feeling the reality of his love is proof far beyond what I could get from any stack of books or statements from important people. The proof is personal, tangible, real. Just as I have felt his perfect love, I hope you can feel it also. Let's review what this perfect love provided by Jesus is. Number one, it is unlimited. It comes from the creator of the universe, so it can be big enough to cover all my needs. No matter how big my problems are, his perfect love is big enough to cover them. Number two, his perfect love is unconditional. I don't have to try harder. I don't have to earn it. 
I don't have to do anything but believe in Jesus and accept his perfect love. Number three, his perfect love is forever. I don't need to worry about him withdrawing his love if I do something bad. Nothing I can do will make him love me more. Nothing I can do will make him love me less. This assurance gives me great peace. His perfect love continues beyond my life here on earth. Jesus says he will hold me in his loving arms forever. Even after I die, I will continue to live with him. I am suggesting that you follow the person who offers you perfect love, Jesus. Accept a close, loving relationship with the person of Jesus. Jesus asks us to abide with him. We can do this by reading first the Gospel of John, then the other Gospels, and the broader New Testament. Jesus' own words, as recorded in the Gospels, will help us understand this Jesus who offers you and me perfect love in exchange for simply believing in him. I hope this discussion is helpful to you.